Hi everyone, I'm going to be working on this huge thing and this is, as you can see, it's a bent wood bench and this is going in my client's snooker room. He's actually built a, a, a separate building at his property to house a full size snooker table. I've also done a scoreboard for him and two snooker cue holders that were in a really bad state of repair so I've fully restored those. They'll be coming after this. So I'm doing two of these. I've got two identical benches. Obviously I'm not going to be filming both. The main reason is look at the size of it. It won't fit in my workshop, in this part of my workshop, that way round. It doesn't look in a terrible state of repair, it's really, really, really dirty. I'll go over it with you, see what you think, hopefully enjoy the restoration and thanks for watching. This bench has led a very long and probably quite a difficult life. It comes from my client's father's snooker hall, which he had for about 30, 35 years, something like that, maybe longer. and these snooker halls back in the day were renowned for being very smoky environments and you can see that from the finish and the dirt that's accumulated on this piece of furniture it's a lovely piece of furniture you'll see that as we go on in the video all those hole details are individually drilled and each one pretty much is full of muck and dirt and it didn't come out that simply, which you'll see very, very shortly. But all in all, a beautiful piece of furniture under that dirt and that poor finish. But we'll see what we can do and make this beautiful again. This is the back of the chair. And as you can see, it's not much better than the front. All those stains from years and years of it being wiped down and goodness knows what else. So that's going to need refinishing as well and I didn't film it but I tipped it upside down and the bottom is even worse than that so lots of work to do but we'll crack on and get started before I start going at this with cleaning products I don't know if you can see there lots of drill hole details in it and nearly all of them full of gunge, dust and dirt. The back's not too bad, but the bottom isn't the best. So rather than just wetting it and making these harder to get out, I'm going to try and blow it with compressed air and see how I get on with that and then a vacuum maybe. So I'll give that a go. Well, that didn't work very well, but let's see if the shop vac will do it. No, that's not going to work either. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do this because it's just a massive job, but this muck in these holes, it's not just dust, it's ground in muck. So I'm going to have to go through each and every single hole with some of these bottle brush cleaners and then hoover it or vacuum it and then clean it down so oh, this is going to take forever <laughs> this particular task requires quite a lot of focus which is a good time to tell you about this video partner better help now many of us have experienced certain levels of anxiety and stress in our life and i'm no exception to that Unfortunately for me, there was a time when anxiety and stress was really affecting my quality of life, which is why I got help from a therapist. Therapy was pretty life-changing for me. I learned how to identify the signs and triggers of my anxiety, how my body might react physically to anxiety, and the ways to avoid panic attack. Most importantly, I learned how to understand what was in my control and what was totally out of my hands, and just be okay with that. The main anxiety I had was catastrophizing about things, mainly around my health and convincing myself I had serious illnesses with every slight pain. And the therapy I had gave me the tools to stop my mind racing 
at 100 miles an hour. Just take a breath and put things into perspective. Now, lots of people think you have to go through these things alone, but you don't. There's help available. Professionals that are trained with the knowledge, skills and tools to help you through it. And that is where BetterHelp comes in. The paid partner for this video, BetterHelp, makes starting therapy less intimidating and far more accessible. They offer sessions through phone calls, video chats or messaging, whatever suits you. And they'll match you up with the therapist's best place to meet your needs to ensure you get the support you deserve. So if my story resonates with you or at your point where you could just use some guidance, consider checking out BetterHelp and join over 4 million people who've taken the step towards a healthier and happier life. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash Mayfield Restorations and then choose Mayfield Restorations at sign up for a special discount off your first month. I finally found a better way to do this. So drill bit that's exactly the right size just to clean the inside. It's not drilling out any material, it's just cleaning. That's a bit quicker, miles easier. So I'm gonna do that and then I can clean it all down. Brilliant. Oh, finally. So all the holes are clear now. You can see all the rubbish that's come out of the holes. This is <laughs> all the rubbish on the floor that's fallen through. And that's this is just from the holes. It's not I've not even started wiping the rest of the furniture down. So it's taken me um time to start. Four hours. Four hours just to clean the holes out on this piece. So Two of them, that's going to be a day's work just to clean the holes out. <laughs> but hopefully it'll be worth it in the end. I've flipped the bench upside down. And this, that's all the underside. Got all the lovely bits of old chewing gum. I'll get all this chewing gum off, clean the underside, underside clean the top, and then you can start getting... Some proper work done on it. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of bleach in this bucket just to kill any mildew. My client wants to try and retain a bit of the character in this. All this stuff is going to get stripped right back and refinished. All the frame and the arms and the back. But this bit, he wants to try and retain as much of this as possible. Now it's full of dots of paint and bits of stain splashes. So rather than using a paint stripper, I'm going to clean all this back all this centre bit with some methylated spirit or it's otherwise known as denatured alcohol with some 4-0 steel wool and see how it looks after that. Some of this paint I might have to just gently scrape off. Hopefully I won't have to do any sanding on this at all but there is some really big gouges but I'll have to see how it looks after after cleaning up with the meths. You can actually see here people have actually been scoring the net. looks like DA. David looks like it wasn't me. I'm David, and that wasn't the start of my uh, my name, but somebody scrapped that in. So things like that, I'll sand out. There's going to be a lot of deeper gouges and grooves that are just part of the character of the piece. So I'll leave those in. But we'll start off with this. Let's see how this looks. Hello, oh, how are you? Have you lost it? Do you want me to find it? Where is it? It's there! There it is. Do you want a new one? Go on then. Come on, have you got one? Do you want me to get you one? Have you got one? Come on. Oh, <laughs> oh, very pleased with yourself, aren't you? Very pleased with yourself. <laughs> Taking it in your bed? Okay. Do 
The other good thing with doing this, because it's a very fine steel wool, it's actually cleaning up those brass nails as well. So that'll save me a job further down the line. Right, I'll just wipe that back and have a look. This is how it looks <laughs> after I've been at it with the methylated spirit. So I'll just clean it over now with some white spirit or mineral spirit and see how it looks after. Lovely. Before I start sanding at this, it's quite, even though I've cleaned it and cleaned it with white spirit, it's got a lot of thick gunge on it now. It's probably a combination of dirt, old finish, nicotine, <laughs> just everything. It's, it's, like I say, it's been in a snooker hole for a long time, this. I'm doing this flat. One of the things I look at when I'm doing it is the depth of these marks. So I'm going to try and get a lot of these out, but there's still going to be loads in there, but it's part of the character of the piece. But as you can see, there's plenty of them. Just had a go at sanding without scraping and that is why I can't do that look it's just bogging up the sandpaper so I'll have to continue scraping and once I've got the bulk off I can then go in with the sand and hopefully this won't happen so that's no good It looks like it's been refinished multiple times but over muck so I couldn't save this finish this this finish needs to come off it's just it's just awful yep it'll look lovely when it's done These are the big bits I want to try and get out. Now they're not all going to come out, but I just want to make them. There's absolutely hundreds of them, so I just want to reduce that appearance. day to get all the finish off, scrape it, sand it. I still need to just go over it with a bit of finer sandpaper, some 240 grit. But the only piece left to do on the frame is this bit and it's quite close to this drilled area which I don't want to touch so I'm going to take this off. It looks like it just unscrews and then I can, uh, I can get that back down to the bare wood. There's a little Roman numeral on this now. 11XXX or <laughs> XXX11 it might be. I'm not very good at Roman numerals so if anybody knows that let me know in the comments. <laughs> As I'm sanding this I've just noticed it was something shiny inside. Yeah it's got a little, it's got another little brass 
collar that the screw sits into so I'll polish those up as well I forgot to hit record on the camera when I was doing these repairs and all it is, these legs were slightly loose they weren't coming away but because of the way it's nailed in the seat I couldn't take it all to pieces so all I did is I just knocked the joint that way so I opened the joint up a bit and then got some glue in there and I can see the tenons so the little dowels I've got glue all around them and I've done the same with this one and I've put hide glue in there, clamped them up, and I just need to leave them to dry now. So apologies, I forgot, <laughs> I'd had all the camera set up and I forgot to hit record, so I do that quite often, but sorry about that, but that's the repair I've done. In brown mahogany. We'll need quite a bit for this. That's still coming through a bit, that names. You can see there, there's an A. So I just want to get rid of that, that's that's not very nice. So leave that to dry, sand it like across and redo that bit. I was going to use hard wax oil on this piece and just wipe it on or roll it on and then take off the excess. The problem I've got is these holes, because it's oil, the likely it is no matter how lightly I put it on, they're gonna it's gonna drip through these holes. The oil's gonna catch as I go across. Some of them maybe get clogged up. There's going to be runs probably on the back, so I have to keep working from front to back. It's just going to be a pain, and there's no way I'm blocking these holes up because it took me four hours to clean them out. So I'm going to use a aerosol spray, a lacquer. It's a lot lighter, a lot thinner. It will sort of coat the inside of the holes, but it won't block them up. So that's what I'm going to use all over this piece. It's just going to take quite a bit of lacquer. Just a few little finishing touches to do now and that is it. So if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps the channel and I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel through my buy me a coffee page and the super thanks button. 
If you'd like to support the channel, then please see the links in the description. Hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you very shortly in the next one. Thanks for watching.